Hello and welcome to SNR Tech Bytes. Today I want to talk about bulk spools. This is a 10 kilogram spool that I picked up from Push Plastics. And when compared to a 1 kilogram spool, it's quite the difference. I wanted to have something that I could spool directly off of on my printer so I didn't have to swap filament as often. But I had a lot of concerns with the inertia of the spool being too much for the extruder to overcome. So I spent quite a while designing a large format spool holder that can hold this 10 kilogram spool and feed directly into my printer so I never have to change my filament, at least not for a long time. And this plastic actually does a pretty impressive job of printing. As many of you know, I'm working on a full Iron Man suit. And here's a piece of the back plate that you guys will see shortly and you can see the amazing finish that this plastic is leaving. So let's get right into how I built the spool holder. And the first thing we're gonna need is some hardware. First, we're gonna take our 330 millimeter aluminum extrusions, we're gonna spread them out, and we're gonna grab our 300 millimeter aluminum extrusions. We're gonna set them on either side. Now, the way you want them oriented is you want the 330 millimeters inside of the edges of the 300 millimeters. If they're not perfectly square, that's okay. The corner pieces will help you square them. Now we're gonna grab our corner pieces. We're gonna grab four of our M3 screws. We're gonna feed them in. We're gonna take four of our M3 hammerheads. We're gonna screw them in on the back, just loosely. You don't want us to screw these in all the way. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna line these up parallel with the part. We're gonna set them on our lunar extrusion so it makes contact with both. We're gonna sort of make sure that the lunar extrusion is parallel. And then we're gonna grab our screwdriver, tighten them all down. Now these are self-locking, which is why the hammerheads are awesome. If you don't get the hammerheads, you actually have to thread them on individual, and that's really hard to do with this assembly. So you really should get hammerhead T-nuts. Okay, now that that's nice and snug, we're gonna do the next one. Now we're going to grab our other two corner pieces and we're going to assemble them so that this 45 degree protrusion is sticking forward towards the rest of the aluminum. We're going to do this part a little bit different. We're going to put these four screws in on the front plate, but we're also going to put these two in on the side along with the six nuts associated. Once you have all the screws in, it should look something like this. The way we're going to install this, we're going to make sure that all four of these screws are parallel and pushed all the way back towards the plastic. And then we're going to take our aluminum extrusion that's already assembled and we're going to lift it up and we're going to thread this on the aluminum extrusion. Sometimes the nuts will get stuck. Just take a screwdriver and kind of poke the top of them so that they turn the correct orientation. Now we only want to tighten one screw here. We just want it to hold it in place. We don't want to tighten all four yet. And then we're gonna do the same thing on the other side. Okay, the reason we only tightened one screw is because now we need to take this last piece of aluminum extrusion, we need to put it here, but we want to make sure that we actually get it aligned right. So align all four of your nuts to be parallel again. And then we're gonna stick our part on. If it doesn't quite fit in place, you actually want to loosen that one screw you tightened until it snaps in place. Once it's in, now we can go around and tighten all six screws on each side. Next, we're going to put in the three screws that make up the corner. So you're going to have these two screws on the side plate here and this one screw on the top plate. Put the screws in and the nuts on the back. Once you have all those screws in, you're going to do the same thing and make sure that it's aligned parallel. You're going to slide in the two pieces of aluminum that sit at a 45 degree angle. Once those are in, go ahead and tighten them all the way. Now we're going to set this aside and we're going to start working on the actual bearing supports to support the 10 kilogram spool. So for these pieces, we're actually going to have eight bearings in each one. There's going to be two here, two here, two here, two here. Now you'll notice I have brass inserts in mine to cut costs a little bit for anybody who chooses to build this, I removed this and instead you're gonna use M8 bolts that thread directly into the holes. You're gonna need a relatively big screwdriver to torque it through because there's actually about uh, eight millimeters of thread engagement in here. So in order to assemble these, we're gonna grab our eight bearings. We're gonna set two here, two here, two here, two here. We're gonna grab our M8 
bolts and we're going to screw it through. Now you want to be careful because if you screw too tight the bearings won't move. You want to screw just tight enough so the bearings can move freely but not so tight that they start binding. Okay, once those are in, make sure the bearings spin completely freely. And then what we're going to do is we're actually going to put a screw in either side here and a nut inside. Now what I like to do in to install these is put the nut on my finger and just slide it through until I can see it through the hole. And then I put a screw through and I just give it about one turn to lock the threads in place. Now we're going to take this assembly and mount it to the rest of the spool holder. You want to mount it in such a fashion that the bearings face in but are also facing up. Just like this. To do this, the easiest thing to do is going to be to turn this so it's vertical and then make sure that all the nuts are parallel just like we've done before. One trick you can do with these is you can actually tighten the screws all the way down but make sure that the nuts are parallel to the aluminum extrusion. Don't tighten them all the way, just tighten them so that they're both stuck facing their lowest profile direction. Slide it on so it gets all the way on. And then what you do is you unscrew them a little bit, usually two or three turns, and then you re-tighten them and it'll engage that piece so it doesn't come off. And then same thing on the other side. Okay, now the spool holder is almost done, but if our aluminum extrusion isn't cut at the exact right length, we're actually going to start binding on the spool. So we're going to grab the spool holder itself and we're going to assemble it. Now in order to make the inertia as low as possible, and as well as to make this thing as strong as possible, it does actually have an aluminum or steel core. This is a 6.35 diameter dowel rod cut to 265 millimeters. What this is going to do is it's going to slip through the middle. And then we're going to take our end caps and we're going to thread them on. Now the reason we need the metal rod is because the entire 10 kilogram weight is being supported on that little piece right there. And the reason for that is to keep the inertia as low as possible. So we're going to go ahead and screw the other side on for now, just so we have this. And what you're going to notice is it's not going to fit. So what we're going to do is we're going to loosen one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight screws. Once those are loose, we're going to start spreading it out just a little bit until our spool holder fits inside. Once it fits inside and it's not binding against the screws on the inside, and it looks like it's a comfortable fit, make sure that the aluminum extrusion is still making contact with all of the screws and then tighten everything back up. Now at this point your spool holder is done, but you want to make sure that it spins freely, there's very little resistance, you can just kind of roll across it with no issue. Now we're going to go ahead and mount it on our spool. So we're going to set the whole thing aside, we're going to grab this piece again. We're going to unscrew one of the sides, sorry for the terrible squeaking. We're going to make sure it's pushed all the way down. We're going to grab our 10 kilogram spool We're going to thread it through the center hole until it comes out the other side. You should see the little metal hanging right there. We're going to grab the other side of our spool holder. We're going to slip it onto that metal rod and then we're going to tighten up the threads until they're nice and snug and then our whole spool should be able to be supported from this. If it doesn't get supported from this um, make sure that your metal rod is long enough. If like one of the if one of the pieces snaps off, for instance, make sure the metal rod is actually long enough because if the metal rod isn't helping support that weight, it's not going to work. Once that's done, we'll give it one last test fit on our spool holder here. It spins great, so we're ready to hook it up directly to our printer. Now, a couple notes on this system. I'm running this on my Prusa i3 Mark III S. It's working just fine. I'm having no issues. I have fears that on a Bowden system, the extruder might not quite be strong enough to pull this. Worth a try if you want to try it. Uh, worst case scenario, you can re-spool this onto one kilogram spools. If you guys want me to, let me know below and I will make a video about how to do that. And there we go, a 10 kilogram spool holder. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you next time.